What's up, everyone? Welcome to Monocast Season 2, Episode 1. Yay! Yay! And uh, the reason why I'm calling it Season 2 is because it's going to be a lot different from Season 1. And the biggest, obvious, most needed change is uh, we'll be actually consistent with the episodes, or at least as, as consistent as it possibly can be. And... It'll be much more, what's the word? Planned. Yeah, planned and not random and we'll actually be prepared to do things and every episode we'll be telling scary stories or viewer stories or whatever. So if, speaking of which, if you guys have any stories that you want us to read off in the next episode, leave them in a comment or message me on Twitter or Discord. It could be funny, scary, sad. Anything that's interesting and we deem worthy of reading, we will read it. So let me know. Or you can call. What we may do. Oh uh, yeah, we might call in. Have people yeah. call in and tell them. And if you're not a troll, that'd be great. In this episode, we're going to be do playing a game, <laughs> Zelda fan fiction, because the Splatoon one was such a hit and everyone still talks about it, which surprises me. That and we bring it back and probably do something like this every episode. And then we're gonna talk about Octopath Traveler and what Emma thinks of it. And then Emma is gonna read off some scary stories to finish the show Spooky. that she found on Reddit. Spooky stories. Pretty freaky. I haven't heard them yet. Hey, listen. So yeah, on to the fan fiction game. It's called Guess That Zelda Fan Fiction. Am I you ready for this? Yes. And this is in no way a ripoff of Come Let's Go Morning and what they do there, stuff like this. There's no way. Uh, it's heavily influenced by. All right, get it right. Um, all right. To start this wonderful game on off with that I work really really hard on coming up with the questions and answers to. The first question. This Zelda fan fiction revolved around Link and his childhood crush, Malin, who is abused by her father, Ingo, who owns Lon Lon Ranch. Link and Malin have sex and live happily ever after, but not before Link gets his revenge on her father. How does Link do it? Is it A, beat him to death with his bare fists and feeds his body to the pigs? Is it B, slice his neck and throw him out a window to his death? Or is it C? Asking him kindly to leave, and he does. <laughs> Which one is, what is the correct answer? I think it's B. Why do you think it's B? Because I feel like... I don't know, the feeding to the pigs thing sounds Too real. Brutal. No, it sounds real to me, but... Obviously, the leaving him, asking to leave kindly didn't, isn't it? And so I'm just guessing B because I feel like he had to have used a weapon. Okay, well, you're correct. Yep. Let's get a, let's get a, let's get this in here. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> wow. One for one. And I'll, I'll read an excerpt from this. It's called, um... Uh, actually, I don't remember what it's called, but Ingo stood over her. Ingo stood <laughs> over her at the side of her bed, one hand grabbing her in one of those places Link was told never to look at, and in his other hand, he some sort of weapon, not meant for killing, but for hurting. A whip, in a sense. <laughs> what? That's a great writing. Huh? What? Did, yeah. What? He said, "In him, in a weapon." What is it? Yeah, it says he's sort, some sort of weapon, not meant for killing, but for hurting. A whip, in a sense. <laughs> okay. Ingo looked at Link for a brief moment and lowered the whip. What are you doing on me farm? <laughs> Your farm? Link asked mentally, not backing down. Baking down. <laughs> oh, God. Let her go, his eyes narrowed. She's my slave. I can do with her as I please, just like the farm she belongs to. This pissed Link off. <laughs> People weren't something you could own, not to him at least. <laughs> oh my god. Not in his own personal opinion, but if 
that's what you want to do, then go for it. Link said nothing more, but waited for Ingo to let her go. When Ingo hit Malin with the whip, making her scream again, Link couldn't take any more. Before Ingo could touch her again, Link had him pinned on the ground and held his sword over his head. It is not your farm. Link sliced at Ingo's neck just slightly, just cutting it, making him bleed no more than that. Oh <laughs> then my he, god. And then he picked the scrawny excuse for a manager, not father or anything, and brought him to the window he was going to climb and held him out the window. What, what are you doing? Put me down, Ingo demanded. And Link did exactly what he wanted, and he fell out the window and died. Crazy shit, huh? All right, wow. moving. What? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> moving on to question number two. In this fan fiction titled Starry Night, a modern world, Link and Zelda are a happy couple who just love to get rough. Oh, God. While Link and Zelda are screwing hardcore, Ugh. Zelda has an orgasm where her loud musical moaning will literally change the music industry forever. What is Link's profession in this? Titty tail. <laughs> oh my fucking I wrote all these descriptions. I don't know if you can tell. Is it A? A lead vocalist for a Hyrulean rock band? Is it B? A record label owner? Or is it C? A music producer? Mm. What was the first one? A lead vocalist for a Hyrulean rock band. <laughs> That's This is what Link's job is? Yeah, because they're having C. sex. And she, yeah, she has an orgasm and changed music industry forever. Yeah, C. A music producer? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Why do you say that? Because she, he, she, he's her producer. Does she sing? I don't know. I you just remember. said that. You just said that she, her moans are like, would change the... I thought it was just because her she had such a good orgasm. She's like, ah! <laughs> You wouldn't sing as told by Ginger with me, but you just did that. <laughs> well, that wasn't cringy at all. <laughs> no, We're not a single this. person will cringe. <laughs> We're deleting this. There's no way. But yeah, she's singing because, and her voice is so beautiful. Yeah, it's C, it's C. Yeah, so why are you trying to argue? Because I want you to be wrong. I want to win. I'll never be wrong. <laughs> all right, this, the next question is a little uh, different than the others. Um, it's a, it's a 20 questions, right? So, it's Zelda fan fiction, 20 questions, and I want and I want you to uh, guess what picture, <laughs> it's a picture, okay? And I want you to guess what it is. <laughs> that's, what 20, that's what 20 questions is. So I want you to do your best. Okay. All right, go ahead. Let's start. Okay. Give me a question. What? You ever played 20 questions? Y yeah. Oh, wait. Can you describe it again? Can you explain it again? You have to... You have to guess this picture. It's, okay. it's a Zelda okay, fan so fiction. Just, so I'm just asking you questions yeah. to get you to... Yeah, you gotta get closer to the answer. And you gotta guess. What? <laughs> Who is it in the picture? I can't tell you. So what am I asking? 20 questions. <laughs> it's Zelda fan fiction. Just so think of Zelda fan fiction esque questions. I... What type of questions can I not ask? You can ask any kind of question. Who is it in the picture? Oh, it has to be yes or no questions. <laughs> <laughs> is it Link in the picture? No. Is it Zelda in the picture? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just assumed that you knew exactly everything, you know? so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, take off your glasses so I can see the reflection. Okay, alright. Alright, so... Okay, so you got two questions. How many questions? Oh, I can only ask 20. Yep. I guess I never have played 20 questions, because yeah. I, I don't know. Um, is she... Doing something to herself. <laughs> oh my uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it might be unintentional. It might be like. Um, yes or no? There's a gray area. Uh, it might be something. Uh, is she touching herself? In this picture, yes, but. Yes, she is touching herself. So that's four questions. 
okay. It's more of like a, it's an action. Is she grabbing her boobs? No. Is she touching her downstairs? No. Is she touching her back stairs? Um, no. Well, look at, I'll tell you this. It has to do with her back stairs. <laughs> Is she putting something? No. So you're at eight queries. Is she... The cat's climbing on the computer, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Lara! <laughs> <laughs> She's in spot. All right. Is she... She's, is she putting something inside of herself? No. Nine questions. Is she spreading her ass? No. <laughs> is she bending over? Um, Lila. Slightly. E. Slightly bending over. Farting? <laughs> <laughs> is she farting? Yes. She's farting. Is she cake farting? No, but you, that's it. That's the. That you, she's farting. Okay, can't see it. That's the thing. That's the fetish. She's literally like, I'll I'll put this on the screen for you guys. What the fuck? She's literally like farting. I don't. <laughs> what the hell? I don't understand who made this or why. They they should have took her character model from Twilight Princess and also just straight drew her farting. Like, oh my tummy. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Zelda taking a sh shit herself. Yeah. So good. Oh my god. I know, you're three for three. That's pretty good. You killed that 20 questions. Probably should have limited it to like exactly how many you guessed. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right. question number four. I think I asked the same questions like three times in a row, but you know, it's fine. Yeah, it's whatever. Who cares? Right, number four. Almost all of these stories have several things in common. A cringy 14 year old wrote them. <laughs> so you? No. From themes to Link and Zelda having sex to terrible amateur writing, what thing do these stories have most in common? Oh gosh. It's a trick question. Is it A, boob touching? Is it B, not knowing how orgasms work? Is it C, not knowing how women work? Or is it D, all of the above? All of the above. No, it's all of the above. <laughs> Definitely all of the above. I'll try and find a, uh, here we go. This is an excerpt from one of the stories, I don't remember which one, but it says, What, what? What's wrong? He was actually frightened. No, no, you can't stop. Not now, Zelda said in her shaking voice. Does that hurt? Because there's a lot more to go, Link said nervously. <laughs> don't, Don, stop. She whispered, closing her eyes. Her body tensed up more, slowly, carefully, just a little more. So Zelda moaned in pain through gritted teeth and dug her fingers into Link's shoulders. Link felt guilty. The woman he loved was in pain, and it was because of him. Yet his sensation was very, very different. She felt amazing, and he still hadn't truly penetrated her. <laughs> he would never admit to her how wonderful her body felt. Zelda whimpered as tears formed in her eyes. She needed something to bite down on, so she reached over and shoved the edge of the pillowcase in her mouth. The next part would be even worse, because it would be the rest of him. As predicted, Zelda shrieked in horror into the pillow. As she clawed her fingers into his back, her body was so tense. <coughs> this fucking cat keeps trying to get into Sorry, my box it, of electronics. Yeah, there's a a cardboard box in this room with a bunch of electronic like wires and stuff and whatever and she every sound you've heard in the background is me having to get up and get her out of it and she literally just keeps go walking out of the room and walking back in and going back in in it yeah continue i never dreamed this would hurt you this much it's not supposed to be that way right blink asked as tears streamed down his face the Zelda hell? managed to smile she shook her head no give it time it may not be right now or in the morning but eventually you won't hurt me. Zelda said reassuringly, that must have been something in Impa's journal. I'm sorry, Link. Or Zelda. Link rested his forehead against hers. Jesus, they don't know anything. Does it hurt? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the anime. That, yeah. would, that would be in the anime. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, Zelda. <laughs> My dick is hurting you. <laughs> 
It's not supposed to be this way. Jesus. Kind of cringy shit, huh? Yeah. It's pretty bad. Pretty fucking cringy. Clearly like a 14 year old. Yeah. Kid. They don't, they have no idea how it works. Yeah. Anyways. They probably heard it like sex ed. They're like, it hurts the girl at first, but then it goes away after <laughs> yeah. the time. He's like, oh. It'll be exactly worth what it. it's like. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, oh, man, if I just did this to Jessica and Home Run, the girl I love, I would just, I mean, I would, I would just cry because I just love her so much. Oh, God. Anyway, back to the game. Yeah, this is the final question. Okay. It was hard to find stuff for this. It wasn't as easy as Splatoon 1. But, uh, so number five. You had all of them right. Oh, yeah. Can you go for the Queen Suite? Oh, I go for the Queen Suite. And this is Zelda fan fiction. Link plays the role of the. Oh, I don't spell. King of Hyrule, whereas Zelda is the queen. Link is a very busy man, so there is just not much time for romance with Zelda, so he takes his sexual needs out on the imp Minda. Oh, God. One night, however, they finally have sex. Does this change Link's womanizing mind? Oh, hell not. He still has sex with the imp Minda. Zelda later finds out about this. How well does this turn out for Link? <laughs> uh. Is it A? Zelda kills Minna and takes her sexual revenge out on Link. Is it B? Zelda and Minna eat slob, Link's knob? Or is it C? Zelda and Minna have hot lesbian sex to see what the fuss is all about. Oh no, he did the hardest question for last. Did I? I didn't mean to. <laughs> I think it's B. You think it's B? Zelda and Minna eat slob, Link's knob? Is that your final answer? Is that a clapping? I don't know. Or a booing. No, with the drum roll. <laughs> well, is that your final answer? Read me the answers again. A. Zelda kills Minna and takes her sexual revenge out on Link. B. <laughs> it's that one. Zelda it and is. Minna. It is. Give me that drum roll. Nope. Hold on, I'm not done reading. Okay. Zelda and Minna eat slob Link's knob. <laughs> or is it C. Zelda and Minna have hot lesbian sex to see what the fuss is all about. No. It might be C. It's A. Give me that drum roll. Get a drum roll. Let's go. I want to see A. A. Oh, it's A. Zelda kills Minna. It takes her sexual revenge out on Link. You think a 14 year old would do that in a story? To not have both of them fucking at the same time? I'm like, you know, 14 year olds very well. Because you are. Wrong! No! They it's both slob his knob. I yeah, the slob the knob. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's we'll see an excerpt out of that uh, story. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here we go. Mmm! The heavy door closed shut with a faint echo through the hall. Link, grinning sheepishly, arched his head back and moaned with satisfaction as he glanced downwards. Underneath the wooden desk, as on either side of his large manhood, was the missing queens naked and aroused whilst taking turns of servicing his member with tongue-filled kisses wet sucks all while jerking him off simultaneously with kinky smirks upon their lips quite the description are you hard over there no <laughs> <laughs> are you hard over there no what i thought so Boss. congratulations emma you got four out of five right. Still pretty good. Couldn't get the sweep going, but uh. Thank you. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. And uh. On. Guess that! Video game fan fiction! Woo! Insert transition music here. I fucking got bound out. I fucking got bound out. So. We can either, let's talk about Octopath real quick. We're approaching the 24 minute mark on this episode, but there'll be like, there's a couple minutes of silence and shit taken out. Yeah, that's the transition music. Tink. <laughs> there you go. That's copyright. copyright. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound of the strike. <laughs> so. And what do you think of Octopath Traveler, the game that you were looking forward to for like almost a year? So. What do you think? So. Yep. The first game, the first, 
So I was never into video games when I was younger. Like, my dad had a PS2 when I was, like, really young. And it was a PS2. Yeah. Um, it was a PS2. And uh -huh. we played, my sister and I played WWE. Like, I don't remember what, it, like, some brawl something or whatever. And we also played Driver. I think it was Driver 2. Or maybe it was just Driver that was for the PS playstation like the original playstation driver yeah that sounds familiar yeah i think it was on the playstation but it yeah. was one of those things that you could play you can play it on the playstation 2 whatever any playstation original playstation game you can play it on ps2 yeah they have the same just screening thing yeah so that's what i think it was i played the original driver and like some wrestle wwe thing yeah and that, those are the only like video games ever like i mean a few time, few things here and there because i had like donkey kong and banjo like kazooie and stuff randomly um and I, so i haven't played any like video games at all until sean bought me a 3ds last year and yep well 2ds oh yeah well yeah 2ds i got the 2ds xl and what what games did you did you buy me i'm trying to remember i'm which a little hazy on this timeline of the ds buying was the 2DS not the first thing you got? Or did you trade no, it? No, I, I got the that 2DS the XL. Thing. Yeah, that was the first thing I got. Because I didn't like the 3DS because the 3D would hurt my eyes and give me headaches. Yeah, everyone hates it. Sorry yeah. for me, I fucking love that shit. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I never liked it. So when I would use... Because I I think you like let me play something on yours you, or something. And I, was you, like, I let you play Octopath Traveler, the demo, when it first came out. Like, yes, that's what it was. Almost exactly a year ago That's now. exactly what it was. I forgot that that's what made me yeah. made you get me the DS. Yeah, because you, you liked it so much. So I was like, Bravely Default is like the same game because it's made by the same people. It's like really similar. So I had Chris let you borrow it. Yeah. And you still have it. Yeah. So I forgot that that's what made me start get have you get me the DS was that he let me play the, the demo of Octopath Traveler, and I was like, this is so good. I played the Primrose part, and I think I played the Olberic part, too. Yeah, you did. And I was like, this is, oh my god, I'm gonna play this so bad. So he he bought me the DS, and Chris let me borrow, he got Chris to let me borrow Bravely Default, and th I think that was around the same time that Metroid came out. Yeah, it so, was, because Metroid came out last September, which yeah. is when the demo for Octopath was. So. Yeah, so, so Sean whipped out his... 3DS and got Metroid and was playing that while I was playing Bravely Default and we literally would not like say a single word to each other. We'd just lay next to each other and play our DSs for like hours and so I know I'm like rambling I guess. Yeah ramble. But yeah so I played like 40 something hours of Bravely, Bravely Default and then I started playing like um, Minecraft. Minecraft and Dark Moon, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. Oh yeah, I forgot Luigi. Yeah, and uh, I basically beat that like right at the last minute, and I can't like beat for some reason. Um, but so, Sean bought me a Switch and got me Octopath, and it's so fucking good. It's so fucking good. How hard do you think it is for someone who doesn't really like play games? I mean. I feel like you can kind of figure it out, but I mean, like I, I asked Sean questions, like with there's like um, sec, like secondary jobs or whatever, and like I, I ask him for help with that because I want to I want to give secondary jobs to the most like to the best people and like equipping things. I sometimes ask him for question, ask him questions for, like for help with that because for the same reason I want to make sure everything is like. Everyone has the best things and stuff, even though, like, you can click that button. That, yeah, the optimize the, button. Yeah, the optimize button, but I don't think it's that hard. May, maybe if you... I don't know. I don't know. Well, there's some things that you didn't even know you could do that I showed you, like, running and, yeah. uh, like, certain uh, tactics in battle, like, I taught you. I feel like ever since yeah. I really, like, sat down and, yeah. like taught you some things that's when you started playing it more and like thinking it was easier yeah so i was just gonna say that i think if sean didn't get me bravely default then i would literally have no idea what i was doing but because he showed me what to do with bravely default it was easier to start with this but i still have to ask him questions that's i mean if you were if you were 
just wanting to play like for fun and or just kind of like doing it for whatever I think it's somewhat easy but if you want to like really play it and be good and really like move on and like be serious about the game then it's hard because like Sean was just saying that he had I had, keep asking questions because I like like when you break people's like sh what is it armor shield like the yeah the shield thingy would I yeah. don't remember what exactly what it's called I was like boosting before those were broken and it's like kind yeah, of a waste and stuff. No damage and stuff yeah so it's like uh, there's things that I definitely if you're serious you, you well, need, it's hard this is like your first RPG was at Bravely Default, mm -hmm. which both of them are not a good, like, entry point for people who've never played games like this. Yeah. A game like, that would be good for that is something like Paper Mario or the Mario and Luigi games, which you should play because they're good. Mm -hmm. There's like 17 of them on the 3DS right now, the, uh, the Mario and Luigi games. Mm -hmm. They're just like, they're the same style of game, like, Octopath and Baby Default, just like Mario version, and like way easier. But like teaches you like basic stuff, like RPG elements and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think the game is really that hard because I've been playing games like this literally since like third grade. Like games like Legend of Dragoon is my favorite game of all time, and Final Fantasy IX it was both on the original PlayStation. It was super fucking good, and. Games like that and like Xeno, like the old Xenoblades, which were called Xeno Gears and stuff, and the old Final Fantasies, like all those games, like have their DNA in Octopath and Bravely Default. So it's like I know everything, well not everything, but like the basic stuff, like what strength does and what in like elemental attack does and stuff. Um, every, like Bravely Default though. They're more specific, like vitality. Like that was a stat that increased health and like um, intellect that increased the the elemental attacks. But like every RPG ever has those same stats, so it's like I know everything about all that crap. So there's like no learning curve really for me. But with you, there's like so much shit that I had to like teach you with Baby Default mm -hmm. and kind of with Octopath. Yeah, like I can I can think of like dumb things. Like I I was thirty two I think I was thirty two hours into it and I didn't know how to run. Yeah. I didn't know how to run. <laughs> because it didn't I, I swear it didn't tell me, but maybe it did and I just didn't realize, but I don't know. It's like yeah. so things like that, it's like I don't know. And like things that to Sean are probably seems probably so dumb. I'm like, what? I had no idea. Until he points it out, I was like, oh, did you know this? It's like, no, I had no idea. It'd be nice if I knew that. Just because it's it's much easier for someone that's been playing games like this for a while. So if you if you don't play anything like this, then it's definitely going to be hard for you. Yeah. Now that I think about it more, now that I'm realizing all the stuff that you've like pointed out to me, yeah. And if you didn't show me Bravely Default, then I would have no idea how to do this how to mm -hmm. at all because when i played the demo he showed me how to do everything we, he was sat there with me doing it basically but yeah uh, how would you feel about me and you playing an old game like an old rpg yeah i would like not, then you have to be on the channel just in general like, would you just would you sit there and play with me yeah <laughs> yeah what well, is is there any of them that you have in mind well, there's Final Fantasy three on the Super Nintendo Classic that we have. But that's what we started playing, right? Yeah. And, but we we started playing it, but we didn't finish because we didn't get to the po the point where it was two player. Because we were like, "What is going on?" No, that was a uh, secret. Oh, mana. mana. Yeah, that's right. Which that game's okay. It's very outdated. Yeah. The thing with old games is just so outdated. I don't even know if I really want to do that. But Legend of Dragoon, hell yeah, the game's good. Was it on the PS? PS one. Oh, okay. I it. And uh, the Chrono Trigger on the uh, on Steam that we could get, or just get the game on eBay or something, and use Chris's Super Nintendo. But uh, the computer would probably be a better choice. But that game is like revered as like one of the greatest ever in terms of RPGs, or at least JRPGs. What's JRPG mean? Japanese RPG. Oh. Which is like Xenoblade and 
bumped the path. You can just tell because they're all like, anime looking. And yeah, it's pretty much only real difference. A lot of times they're more like turn based, whereas like a Western RPG is like World of Warcraft and Skyrim, and I have like it's usually about like knights and armor and stuff, and the art style is usually a lot different. Mm -hmm. That's really the only main difference. How are you, how's uh, World of Warcraft going for you? Not. <laughs> and why is that? Because I don't play it. And why is that? Because I don't have time. And laptops are just inconvenient when I'm not upstairs. I don't usually feel like sitting up here. Yeah. Like in this chair. Yeah. So, yeah. What game have you been playing the most right now? I've played a shit ton of Octopath lately. And I just got Spider Man the other day, which is wicked fucking good. And I have barely done any of the story. I've just been mainly like swinging around and like helping people and finding all the backpack secret things. And I'm almost done collecting those. And uh, yeah, the game's fucking so good. <laughs> so, what do you, uh, so far, what do you rate it? From one, one out of ten? Or like one to, excuse me, one to ten? What do you Eight. rate it? Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten? Yes. What do you... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, the, the game makes me mad. Not because of the game itself, but because everyone everyone that talks about it, they say it's like, oh, it's, it's the best Spider-Man ever. But it's like, it's so much, it's so similar to like every other Spider-Man game, pretty much, that I've played at least. Like, Spider-Man 2, is, it's pretty similar. And especially Web of Shadows, which is on the 360, I was telling Chris this last night that uh, when I got the game like forever ago, I fucking loved it. But during that time, I wasn't super into video games. I was more into like music, so I didn't like look up any reviews or anything. I just got it because it was Spider Man. And it was just fucking dope. And it was dope. It was so good. Mm -hmm. And then like a couple years later or something, I like looked up the game online. I was like, I felt like nostalgia for it or something. So I was like, uh, I've missed this game. I like sold it or something stupid, mm -hmm. and uh, I looked up reviews and such, and like everyone didn't like it. I'm like, I'm, oh, I really, really don't understand why. And I'm playing the new Spider-Man game. And I'm like, it's so similar. <laughs> it's not even funny. Like the way you swing around and the way you fight and everything. It's just, it's so similar to. Uh, what the shadows? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't really understand why everyone like loves this game but hated that game. Hmm. It was dope. There's like Venom. Venom was like the enemy. And uh, people, you fought like Venom versions of people. And they turned evil. So it was like Venom Wolverine. And he looked badass. He had like Damn. bones coming out of his skin <laughs> and shit. Because he was metal. And there's like Venom versions of uh, other people. I can't remember. But everyone turned into a Venom. And it was awesome. It was, like, this is cool. epic. And then the final fight was a giant Venom. With like three heads, and it was like a serpentine monster. Oh my god. This is the best fucking game. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I beat it twice. Yeah. Because there's like a good vert. You can beat it being a good guy, you can beat it being a bad guy. I like, don't cool. do both. Huh. The bad guy ending was dumb as shit. Oh, really? They just like take over the city. I'm like, okay. That's Chris's dream. Yeah. As a kid, he wanted to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I was going to ask, what, what would you rate Octopath so far from. Uh, one to ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah. I don't like it nearly as much as Bravely Default. Because so far, the story... I don't like how the stories are not connected. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty much what everyone says. Yeah. Um, and there's so many, like, better quality of life things in Bravely Default that aren't in Octopath. Like, you can't fast forward through battles. You can't yeah. turn encounters off. You just no difficulty yeah. settings. There's no... Uh, like, only one person can have a job in the party at the same time, whereas, by default, if you want to have four white mages, you could. I don't yeah. understand why they, like, limited it that much. Yeah. So, it's, and, like, the story's better, by the default, by, yeah. like, a lot. That's what, so, with Sean, that's what, he was saying to me that he likes Bravely Default better because of the story. Which, like, I haven't finished Bravely Default because why did I stop playing it? You get stuck on one part. Yeah. Or I so kept I, telling you to just look up a guide. So, I remember, like, trying to look up a guide and trying to get through it. And so, I was going to say this about Octopath, but I'm, I'm glad that I asked you that. And that's, you bringing it up reminded me that 
yeah, I got stuck in a spot and it was frustrating and I couldn't figure it out. And so I kind of just like put it down and moved, that's when I moved on to Dark Moon, which I got through the whole game besides the last part where I got stuck. And when, the thing is with, like you got a couple tries and you and then you die and then you'd have to restart. With this last level, you die and that's it. You don't get any other tries. So I would get all the way through and at, at the last minute I would die and I would have to completely start over the new, the whole entire level. So I just, I put it down. And that's basically what is happening with me that I'll get stuck and put it down. So with Octopath, I was literally playing it. Like Sean, I would have the day off of work and Sean would have to work and I'd play it when he was like getting ready to leave for work. And I'd play it all day until he'd come home from work. I'd play it for hours and hours and hours. And <coughs> I was grinding and grinding and grinding that I was like a decently high level for like where I was. And I was like, why are you grinding so much? Like just like go ahead and move ahead or whatever and then and then finally when I moved tried like moving ahead I like I think I got one person to the next level and then or something and I could I couldn't get any any further I kept dying because it, it like I wasn't a high enough level so then I put down the game because it stressed me out and like made me mad so like there was a, a few weeks, I don't, I don't remember how long it was, but it was yeah. a couple weeks that I like wasn't playing, I didn't play it. Like it was like two weeks that I didn't play it because I was stuck where I was because when I, I was trying to grind at a higher level places, but I kept dying. So I'd grind on a lower level thing and I would just be grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. And it was, I was barely getting any experience or getting anything. So it's just like, I was, it was just taking forever and forever and forever and it was making me mad, which I don't mind grinding, but it was just, I was grinding for hours and like, I was barely getting any experience until Sean, that's when Sean was like, all right, pick up your switch. Like you're not giving up, like I'll help you. And so he brought me back to the higher level place and not even, didn't even put in any effort. He like had his eyes closed, was in like a handstand and had the, Thing, like behind his fucking head <laughs> as he did it and just all well naked and jerking off okay <laughs> and he got through that higher level and didn't die and it was like took two seconds I was like what the hell just because the way that I was doing it wasn't right so he showed me exactly how to do it and now now I've just been I've been playing it yeah. again um I, w I would have got I would have been way past Sean if I didn't stop playing for those like two weeks because I was like yeah I had way more hours in the game than he did. Just because I had, I don't know, for some reason I had more free time than you did. Look at that stream and like stuff. And you got World of Warcraft, so you've been like playing, trying to play that because it costs money. I barely put like four hours into that game, so we got it. Yeah. Maybe like six. Hmm. Which was like, how long ago now? Almost a month. Yeah, something like that. Came out on like 13th of August expansion and pretty sure I bought it like the next day or the day maybe two days after yeah but yeah I don't know I really 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 like Octopath and Sean keeps telling me that everyone's been teasing that Bravely Default to come into the Switch I don't know, fucking be really excited which when is it December or something or, or they, or I no, think no, they, nothing's been confirmed or announced. It was food. December when they like showed that did that thing because weren't they dressed oh, up like, it was like New Year's or yeah Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. And then the last couple of months there's been a couple other teases, like Octopath are celebrated with million sales with like all the characters in the shape of Airy, the fairy. Yeah. yeah. All, all the, the Octopath. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is fucking weird. Cool. Yeah. So like. That's like getting me excited because I really liked Bravely Default. I just got stuck in that one spot, so it just super irritated me, and I just I gave up. I think you should play it again after Octopath because hopefully the, at that the, point the I story get, is so fucking good. I know that's that's what Sean keeps saying that the story is so good, and it's like, and I really like the stories in Octopath, especially like Primrose, like I don't know all of them. They're all so good. Like I really like the stories. I do agree that I wish that they were like more connected, but. It's just like, 
the, the people who wrote it, they made eight separate stories, so it means the they like a lot of the characters are just so generic, and a lot of the time because there's just not enough time put into one story where they have they can like make everyone interesting and stuff. Mm. So it's just like like OPEC story cannot be any more generic. Like, oh, my friend, who I used to be my friend, is now my enemy, and he killed people. I'm gonna go chase him down. Sorry, there's like a loud truck like idling outside. But yeah, I don't know. And it's just like probably because you've seen it over bad. and over and over again. Yeah. And I haven't. That I think is like I think they're good stories, but I don't think it's bad. It's just like you've it's seen not it a million that times. interesting. Yeah, you've seen it a million times. Like. I like Cyrus's story. Pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, Primrose's and. Elfin so far has been okay. But, like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Sean was saying that the story of Braille Default is, like, much better. So, like, I, yeah. I want to play it. So, hopefully, it comes out on the Switch so I could beat Octopath and then. Then go back to Bravely Default and like have experience from Octopath and have you to help me in that part that I freaking got stuck on. But who knows? Maybe at this point I could go back and just do it myself. Maybe. But I don't I'm know. sure you can. Like I said, I couldn't even. I was this entire like 30 something hours of playing, I didn't even know how to run. So, I don't know. Any last thoughts? Thoughts on the path of Octo? No. Buy it. <laughs> yeah, buy it. All right, I'm going to use this time to tell you guys, hello, you anyone home, to uh, support us on Patreon for even just $1 a month. It could be a $1 or anywhere between a dollar and a million dollars you can support <laughs> us. So anything you want. And you can also become a member of the channel, which was used to be known as sponsors, so it's like five dollars a month. I don't really recommend that because, uh, I mean, you do get like cool badges and stuff when you're in the live streams, and everyone knows that you're a member. But um, less money goes to me. It's like fifty percent goes to me, and fifty percent goes to YouTube. Whereas Patreon, it's only like twenty-five percent, I think. It's like way less. So, I mean, whatever you want. <laughs> I appreciate it no matter what. And also, um, buy a t-shirt because it's only $18, I think. Or buy a sweatshirt because it's starting to get chilly out besides all the people that are like in warm places, but it is still chilly at night. Yeah, buy a sweatshirt. It's only $48 <laughs> because that's the cheapest it would make me do. Uh, if you do buy a $48 sweatshirt for a very small YouTuber, I'd have to question your insanity. <laughs> but I'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to a new segment on the show. It's not really new, but it's more specific and legit. That um, Emma's going to be reading some scary shit off of Reddit. Where not every time is going to be off of Reddit. But some other times going to be your own personal scary spooky stories. Or... It could be something else entirely <laughs> in terms of spooky scariness. So, Emma, give it away. Take it away. Give it give away. Give, give it, it away. away. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not singing. Take it away. We're not singing. <laughs> Take it away. Take it away. Where's my, uh, right here. Spooked you, didn't I? All right. Play it. You just, like, stopped it. I'm pretty sure Zach D has used that in several arguments. You ruined it. Why? Because you g gave my horror boner a fucking <laughs> Zach boner. A Zach flaccid. Isn't that like, the best thing I could do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Play the other scary sound. That, no, that was only for like 10 seconds also. So. Yeah, do it. Oh my god! You scared the living shit out of me! <laughs> Fuck. <Bleh. laughs>
Okay. <laughs> Someone is living in my backyard. Oof. It's rough. So this happened a few weeks ago. I live in a pretty normal house. Pretty normal until you see the backyard. The weeds are overgrown and reach up to your waist. There is a large storage shed, which has not been used for years, at the far corner of the yard. As you might have guessed, I have a pretty big backyard. My room has a window that overlooks the backyard, so it was a school night, and I had gone to bed pretty early. In the middle of the night, about 2 a.m., I woke up sweating from a bad dream. I went to the kitchen to get a drink of water, and I returned to my room. Usually, I don't have my shutters closed because no one can see me from my backyard. I glanced at the backyard, and I thought about how, how it desperately needed to be mowed. My dad always said he would mow it, but he was always too busy. That's when I noticed him. A tall, dark figure was at the far end of the backyard, and he was staring directly at my room. I couldn't see his face in the darkness. I ran to tell my parents. Oof. They weren't pleased to be woken up at this time of night, and my dad said he would go have a look. I waited inside, and after about five minutes, he came back and told me that nobody was outside and must have been mistaken. I didn't take my chances, so I slept on the couch that night. The next day, I went back to my room to see the yard. Nobody was there. I thought to to myself that maybe I was mistaken from the tiredness. The next night, I couldn't sleep. This time, I closed the window shutters. It was around 11 p.m., and I was still trying to get to sleep when I saw a light coming through the shutters. I took a peek and saw a bright light coming from the old storage shed at the end of the backyard. I ran to tell my parents again, and my dad went to have another look. I waited for him to come back, and when he came back, he looked pale. He told me to lock the doors and told my mom to call the police. I started locking the door leading to the backyard when I heard someone frantically punching the door from outside. My dad told me to go to my room and lock the door. My, oh, mom had, my mom had already called the police. A few minutes later, I heard the door from the backyard smash down. I unlocked the door to, I unlocked the door to see what happened, and I saw my dad wrestling with another figure, the one from the backyard. He looked to be in his mid-40s with an unshaved face and dark hair. It was a pretty even fight. My mom was screaming and crying. I was too young to fight a grown man, so I went to my room and grabbed a baseball bat. I ran back to where my dad and the other person were on the ground and hit the guy on the head with the bat, knocking him out. My dad thanked me for helping out, and then the pre police arrived shortly after. Apparently, the guy had been living in the old shed for quite some time. We didn't know who he was or why he was there. The police had a search of the storage shed and found food and other belongings in there. The one thing that creeps me out the most was when the police were taking him away. He, he regained consciousness and looked at me and simply said, I'll be coming for you, Jimmy. How did he know my name? Anyway, two weeks had passed and he was sent to jail for breaking in and stalking. I dread the day that he is let out because he, he will be coming after me. He's only in the jail for two weeks? Is that what they're saying? I don't know. I already have out of it. Oh. That was fucked up. What would you do if some dude was living in our backyard? What if Vic was still there? Or old, her old upstairs neighbor? I don't even... <laughs> it's like living I would in probably tent. get a restraining order on him. Some sort of protection order. If I would do that, like... Regardless, if I if I knew the person or didn't, I'd be like, yeah. they were living there. Like, that's just weird. Reminds me of, um, there's this video that my brother's friend showed me, like, a, 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 a like, ten years ago, at least. And, uh, it was of this girl that we all went to school with. Like, someone in her backyard, like, she, like, feels someone in her backyard, like, just running, like, across her yard. Like, not really. So, I'll just tell you the whole thing. <clears throat> so, they see some guy just, like, standing out there, but, like, in the video, you couldn't really see him. And then all of a sudden, he just starts booking it across the backyard, and, like, all you can see is, this, like, black silhouette just, like, running, and everyone's, like, freaking out in the video and stuff, and, like, screaming. It's like, holy shit. It's straight from, like, signs. When the alien walks across and the TV and stuff. Holy shit. Yeah, it was a weird video. It's like one of those videos that, like, it gives you the heebie-jeebies, you know? Little tingly winglies. Little tingly winglies. Yeah. Mm hmm <laughs> All right, do you have another story? So I actually have a bunch, Oof. and I'm trying to go through the ones that are, like, good. Um... Okay. Last night I heard my husband scream. 
Per the officer's request, I am writing the statement of what place what took place last night at my home. What's likely to happen once What's likely to happen is once I've finished writing, I'll be taken to see a psychiatrist. I don't care. I lost everything I cared about already. Yesterday began as normal as any other week, weekday. I woke up, took a shower, made some toast, kissed my husband goodbye as he got ready for work himself, then got into my car and drove to work. Work itself was uneventful. I got the occasional goofy gif or cute animal photo messages from him throughout the day, and I did the same in return. It's kind of our thing. As the day drew to a close, I packed my things and prepared to head home. I got a text as I left the office that my husband would be staying a little later to wrap some things up. Not a big issue. We would just order in for dinner. I drove home, took a refreshing shower, and picked up the house a bit. My husband later pulled up in the driveway and walked to the door. He looked a little run down, some bags under his eyes. Uh, but nothing struck me as terribly wrong. He said he was just tired and had a busy day. He was a little clammy to the touch, and I could feel his heart pounding quickly in his chest. I told him to take a cool and calming shower while I ordered some Chinese food. We ate watching some TV and around 9.45 decided to call it a night. I gave him a quick kiss before turning over. I realize now that that would be our last. I wish that I had savored it. We turned the lights off and we settled in for sleep. I had only been asleep for a few hours when I heard my husband scream. It wasn't a startled yelp or anything. It was a guttural feral, like he was terrified. My sleep-fogged brain tried to make sense of what was happening. I sat up straight, and my hand immediately went to his side of the bed. It was empty. I panicked and called his name while we were looking around the dark room. He wasn't there. Then I heard a crash as he ran past the open bedroom door into the front door, throwing it open and running out into the night. I scrambled out of bed and ran after him. In the light of the moon, I could see him running down the street in his boxers. I could hear the slap sounds of his bare feet hitting the pavement. I called out to him, wondering if the neighbors would wake up, but I didn't see their lights on. I watched as he reached the end of the cul-de-sac and head back in my direction. He was running so fast. His feet were flying. As he got closer, I started to jog in his direction and stopped dead when I saw his face. His eyes were bulging out of his head and his mouth was open in a wide scream, but there was no sound. I felt dizzy and cold all over. I began to panic. I didn't know what to do. He was running so fast his feet were a blur. I couldn't understand how he could be running so fast. He flew past me just as I reached out for him at his pate. But at his pace, my hand was knocked away. He continued to run faster and faster. His feet were slapping so loud and so hard, I thought he was going to break all the bones in his feet. I began to call his name one more before I watched him launch into the air. My words died in my throat and I sank to my knees. In the light of the moon, my husband took to the sky as if the claws of an arcade machine had picked him up. His feet were still kicking in the air, his mouth agape in a silent scream. He climbed higher and higher into the air and then he was gone. Not disappeared, he vaporized as a bomb went off inside of him. One moment he was there, moonlight glinting off of his pale skin, and then he was gone in a blink. I screamed then. I screamed until my voice cut out. I sat on, a lawn, I sat on the lawn in a dumbfounded silence. What the fuck did I just see? What, what the fuck just happened to my husband? He couldn't be gone. This is not real. This couldn't be reality. Then I felt light sprinkles on my face as it started to rain. The mist was red. It was what, left, it was, what was left of my husband falling to the ground in a fine spray. His blood was on the lawn, the road, the car, and on me. I don't recall what happened next. I think I fell unconscious. I vaguely recall being in an ambulance. I don't have the answers police want. There were no witnesses. There was no body, but it was indeed my husband's blood out in the street. I wish I knew what happened to him, why this happened to him. I keep telling myself it's a horrible dream, and then I'll wake up next to my husband and hold him tight. But I don't think he's coming back. Something took hold of him that night and didn't let go. I kind of wish it was me. I miss him so much. It's one of the most bizarre stories I've ever heard. Well, I was going to say, right now, it's obviously not real. Yeah. <laughs> that's still fucked up, though. Yeah. Like, that's a good-ass story right there. I just like it because it makes me think of aliens. Yeah, aliens are dope. Yeah. Aliens are sick. Put that on a t-shirt. Sickness. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, guys, <laughs> Emma's phone died. It was on 1%. I, I had a bunch of them on my phone, but I couldn't decide which ones to read. I had one that was funny that s someone, it was called My Pokemon Go is Haunting Me. It's actually, it's kind of good, but it's kind of a really long story. Is it like somewhat, like it could maybe be legit or... We'll save that for the next one. No, it's but it's interesting. it's it's good. That sounds interesting. I want to hear it. Okay. Do you want to plug in my phone? No, it's okay. 
We're at an hour. Probably just call it. Call it good for episode one of Monocast season two. Yeah. Bringing it back. <coughs> Let me know what you guys think and what you want us to do for the next episode. If you have any stories you want us to read, leave a comment or leave it in the Discord or DM me on Twitter or Discord. And we will read your personal story next time. Um, it could be scary, it could be funny, it could be heartwarming, it could be anything you want. Or maybe we'll have you a voice call on the Discord. To oh yeah, us. maybe we'll have you call in. I mean, if you're not a troll, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, also, this... I know we were saying earlier that our we were like kind of scrambled before, and this one was kind of scrambly, but we're definitely going to be having more of a structure to it. I feel like this one's a little bit better. Yeah. We're going to have a, we're going to have a better structure and have things more things planned. We're not going to just put out um like a a podcast that's just thrown out and just whatever we need to do one. We're going to like actually have things to talk about and plan it. So, it should be much better than they were before. Hopefully you guys look forward to it and again, leave a like, comment and support me on Patreon or become a channel sponsor slash member and it would be amazing if you were to help out and also check out the um, song that I had just come out with a few days ago I would appreciate that even more to be honest let them know what you think of it and yeah everyone says they like it so yeah that's really nice yeah it's really good I watched Sean work on it sometimes some nights and he's very he's worked really hard on it yeah, so you better fucking listen to it, bitch. <laughs> shit. All right, follow All me right. on Twitter, follow me yeah. on Instagram. All that shit. And we will see you next time on Monocast. And let's sign out, Emma. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Bye. Bye.